Welcome back to Piers Morgan on Sunday. My next guest is the lungs of the nation. Love that phrase. And a firm favourite of our royal family, Catherine Jenkins, performed regularly for the late Queen, most recently at her Jubilee celebrations at Windsor Castle last summer. She's a national treasure in her own right. If you don't believe me, just ask her. She'll soon tell you. She's the new Dame Vera Lim with a unique ability to bring people together in patriotic fervour. And I couldn't think of anyone better to perform on my show, not just tonight at the end of our interview, but Catherine's agreed to sing every night. In fact, she recorded them all this afternoon in the studio. We'll perform at the end of every show for the rest of the week leading up to the coronation, ending in a rousing rendition of God Save the King. Catherine, <laughs> thank you. No, thank you for, for bringing your golden <laughs> sparkle dust to the show. And I believe it's the first musical guest you've ever had. You are the show. first person to sing <laughs> in our studio. Yeah. How do you yeah, feel? Thank Obviously, the greatest yeah, honour of your life. Greatest honour. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I've known you a long time, but you've yeah. also known the Royals a long time. What does this week mean to you? Well, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a huge, iconic moment. Um, you know, it's the first coronation of my lifetime. We haven't had one for 70 years. Right. Um, as you said, I've, I've uh, sung and have met the King many times through our um, sort of shared charity work. Um, he presented me with my OBE award, which is a really What did he say to you? Um, I think at the time I was running the marathon, so he talked about my training for the marathon. <laughs> and that he, must and have that, been interesting. Well, that's the thing with him. I, he's always so informed. Um, Last time I saw him it was at ITV three or four years ago, and he just came down the line. He was saying hello to Susanna Reid and all these people, and he got to me and he went, are you still around? <laughs> <laughs> so he is really funny. But then we had a good laugh about Donald Trump, yeah. He, he wanted right. to know all about my, my interview with Trump. Um, he's a, I've always found him very engaging, uh, always got a ready quip at hand, yeah. uh, and probably the longest apprenticeship for any job in history, right? I mean, he's been waiting decades to do this. Absolutely, and I think, um, you know, for those of us who have met him with the different charity things, for example, um, I worked with him on the British Forces Foundation. Mm. You know, you can see that he is, as I said, informed, but really passionate mm. about those things. Um, I think he wants to do good in the world, and, and I think he has been doing a lot of good, um, you know, with sustainability and environmental issues, conservation, um, all of those things he cares about and I care about, and so that makes me really happy to see. The thing is, it's a bit like you following, I don't know, Barbara Streisand in Vegas, right, in, in the same theatre, isn't it? In the sense that he's following the greatest, right? The greatest monarch there's ever been, in my estimation, his own mother. And he had to follow, you know, succeed, if you like, after she had died. I mean, that's an amazing thing to think about, that it was the loss of his mother that made him king. On a human level, so difficult to do this. And it's got the whole world watching him. Yeah, and I, but I think that's, you know, that's actually a, a positive, is that he has uh, learned, you know, from her. And mm. as you said, you know, she was a, an amazing monarch. Well, you I had was... two amazing things with her. I mean, you had a lot, actually. You you performed before the Queen at the Royal British Legion Festival of Remembrance at Albert Hall, amazing. Um, you then sang the National Anthem of the Queen of the Epsom Derby, the big horse race, <laughs> yeah. for her Diamond Jubilee weekend. You were chosen to sing at the Queen's 90th birthday in Windsor. Uh, you then performed at the Platinum Jubilee event at Windsor Castle. And that was the last time you sang for the Queen, but also the last time... You saw the Queen and she gave you a little wave Aww. as she went. It was it was such an emotional moment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, whole, the whole audience were just so thrilled that she had been able to attend the event. Well, we've got a clip of you singing, I think, from the event. So let's take a little look at that. God, you've got a pair of pipes on you, haven't you? <laughs> wow. Oh, but that was the, at the end of the concert. She, um, she, she, Her Majesty drove around and sort of gave everybody a little wave as she left, and she, she pulled right in front of the stage and she sort of went, "Oh, hello, Catherine." And I, I, I genuinely sort of welled up. I thought it was such such a, a lovely, amazing moment. Yeah, it really, really was very special. But that was the last time um, that I saw her, sadly. But I'm so grateful for the honour of being able to sing for her at the different... Well, you had another amazing honour because when the Queen sadly died, you were performing a, a little event down in Sussex, I think, or recording down there, and you got a phone call to tell you this, this terrible news. But unlike the rest of the country who could sort of mourn, you were asked, look, it's the BBC, and we want somebody to record the first version 
of God save the king. What an amazing responsibility to be asked to do that. Yeah, it, um, I was in a very small, beautiful rural of church, as you said, with, with um, microphones in front of me. And we get the call to say, we would like to play this on the BBC in the next hour. Is it possible that you can record it? And it felt like one of those things, like this was meant to happen, right? Here I am, I could have been anywhere, but mm. I'm standing in a place with a beautiful sound and microphones. Mm. So um, yeah, we actually stopped what we were recording. Um, we, we said a prayer, um, sort of, because it felt strange to then sing mm. the new words. And I had to think about the new words, having always sung it with God Save yeah. the Queen. Um, and we all had a little prayer and, and prayed for, you know, the new reign and for her. Did you find that emotional doing that? Yeah, it was really emotional. Um, and it was one of those things... I welled up when I heard the Queen had died. I mean, I, genuinely, yeah. I really felt that. Yeah. I think we all did, that kind of end of this connection, which we'd all had our entire lives. Yeah, absolutely. And to sort of sing it, you know, in that mm. moment when you are feeling so emotional. Um, but, you know, something clicked in and, and I sang it in one take. One but it take. Was, but it was interesting because, you know, with everybody who's so used to seeing performances mm. and whatever, the minute we went to record it for the very first time, you know, everybody's camera phones went up and you thought, oh, yeah, this is, this is historical. Yeah. This is the first time to ever sing these words. So it was a huge honour. Did you hear from the king? After that, I have not seen him at anything yet, but um, you yeah, will I look do. forward to. You will do. And have you yeah. met Camilla? I have. I have. Um, I, I love Camilla. I, so do I. I'm from neighbouring villages in East Sussex. Oh, I and we always that. joke about, yeah, she's from <laughs> Plumpton. I'm a Newick boy. We're about a mile apart. And she grew up there with her family. I grew up with mine there. And um, she's got that kind of earthy, southern England, local village spirit yeah. about it, you know. Down to earth, no nonsense. We've got a picture oh, of you and her there. That's yeah. when I remember. That's the very first time I met her, and yeah. I, um, we sort of hit it off. I thought she was great, and um, I sang a couple of years ago at one of her charity um, events. I've got her rhino on my wall. Oh, yeah. I think okay. she told me I'm the only I'm the only person who owns a private watercolor by the woman about to be queen. Really? I bought it in a charity auction. She gave it to the Daily Mirror's charity auction, or we bought it in a charity auction. And it's a beautiful picture of a rhino okay. in the bush. And she's signed it and it's on my wall. That's amazing. And every time I see it, she open, her opening line is normally, hi, Piers, how's my rhino? <laughs> Which always makes everyone's eyebrows go up. <laughs> but I, like, I think she's great. And, I know she, and what I really like about her, she comes from that old school of royal duty, which is never complain, mm. never explain, and rarely be heard speaking in public. Three sentences you could not imagine being regurgitated by people in Montecito, for example. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to get you in trouble. He says, trying to you get you in so trouble. Trying, trying to get, to get you in trouble. trouble. Move it on, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever have you been invited to California to sing for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex? Move and it. I hope I hope if you were, you'd say no, would you? <laughs> Move it on, Pete. <laughs> we are actually moving on to a commercial break. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll let Catherine sweat for a few minutes and see if she'll answer that question after the break. More from Catherine Jenkins in a moment. Plus, she's going to sing for us, and that is worth <laughs> definitely hearing. She'll definitely do that. <laughs> We're back with Piers Morgan on Censor. We're in celebration mode for the coronation coming on Saturday. Catherine Jenkins is still with me. Now, you just told me an amazing thing in the break, that you are in New York at the end of this week. What are you doing on Friday? <laughs> I'm going to be helping to switch the Empire State Building into red, white and blue for that is, Jack. That's unbelievable. <laughs> I know. How fun is that? Did you ever think as a little girl growing up in Wales, one day you'd be turning on the Empire State Building? <laughs> I, not at all. Um, it's, uh, it's, I think it's just going to be a really lovely moment to start all of the celebrations that mm. I think are happening across America um, for, for Brits to get involved and celebrate even if they're not at home. Now, the other thing is you very kindly gave me this as well, which you didn't ask me to promote, <laughs> but I like it because it's a <laughs> bottle of gin, and A, I like gin. Um, yeah. This is your new venture, gin. Yeah. So you're going into the whole sort of Brangelina thing of they with the rosé and then Beckham with his whiskey, and they've all got their thing, right? George Clooney and tequila. Right. This is the Jenko, what was it? J Jenkins. Catherine Jenkins. <laughs> Catherine is that Jenkins. It? It's called Signet. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's made six miles down the road from where I grew up in, in Wales. Um, and no, it wasn't like an, it wasn't something I Well, sell it to me. Come on. What, what does it taste no, like? I, well, I, I love gin. I come from a family of gin. Oh, I've seen you knock it back. <laughs> 
and I wanted to create something that was like a really high um, quality ultra premium gin with like all of the ingredients that I love. So for this one, um, this is our Signet 22 that's got uh, Manuka honey in it. Well, uh, you did me a massive favor. Why? So I was doing an audio book and if you've ever done them, they are hell on earth. You get put in a little booth, eight hours a day for days on end. I had to do four days. And after three days, my voice had gone. You just talk for eight hours a day, even by my standards of talking about myself. This was too much. My body packed in. And so I messaged Catherine and she said, I'm sending the cavalry. And you know, <laughs> she turned up at my house. I mean, it's a bit stalkerish, obviously, but she <laughs> turned, turned up at my house 25 minutes later and left throat tea throat and tea. manuka honey. Honey, yeah. And, and you said, do that and also sip water all the time, right? Sip water. Yeah. And my voice came back. Yeah, so, you know, it's the same thing. Drink the gin. But well, if I'd known <laughs> that was the option, it's good it would have made the audio book a lot more listenable. <laughs> well, you know, the other option whenever you get a, a sore throat, Piers, is to go on vocal rest, but I'm not sure if that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do permanent vocal rest. Where do you get these pipes from? When I listen to you sing, even now, it, just, it is staggering, oh. the power of your voice. <laughs> Where did that come from? Um, I don't know. When did you it's... first let loose and think, oh, my God? Um, well, when I was four, I sang in public for the first time. And you I... sang like that when you were four? No, but I but I remember there being a reaction to it. And, and I was always singing because I loved it. Mm. I was never thinking about, oh, one day I'd like to do this, this, and this. It was just a, a genuine passion. Um, but... And do you think you're now a national treasure or is there still a bit of work no. to do? No. Does anybody think that? <laughs> I do, actually. I think you're... I do think you're the new Vera Lynn. You get wheeled out for all the big events, <laughs> looking lovely, and you sing beautifully, and everyone likes you. Well, and that's, you know. I'm very proud of where I come from, and I try whenever I'm... Well, you're going to sing for us every black. night. Yeah. Uh, every <laughs> night. Tonight you're going to sing... Rule Britannia. Rule Britannia. Well, Catherine Jenkins, thank you. <laughs> and Catherine Jenkins, take it away! <laughs>